महादेव 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 presence 
of this element of happiness in it. As long as you are going to see something as a potential source of happiness, you are going to stay attached to it. You will want it. You will want to possess it. You will want to own it. You will want to preserve it. Everything will fall in place only when you start seeing that that object or the person is capable of giving you happiness. This is what happens. We keep on demanding happiness from objects, from people, from everywhere around. And when you do not get it, you psychologists are going to say that his desires are thwarted, frustrated. This is what is the meaning of disappointment that you wanted something you may get the object but you did not get what that object was supposed to give and that's why you find disappointment and as much as the age advances the burden of disappointment goes on increasing as much as our age increases we start finding that where am I leading my life and then that is what you call as your midlife crisis. <laughs> Coming to 45, 50, the person feels I will marry the wrong person. <laughs> and the girl also, the woman feels, my father said not to marry this fellow. I should have listened to him. But now what to do? You know, in America, you have, now that has come to India too, you have this concept of the living relationship. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This boy and girl starts living together without any marriage or anything, any, without any moral, legal, religious obligation just living together. So there was a couple which was living together for 25 years. Then one day, the man said, look here honey, I think we should get married. After 25 years, he says, we should get married. The girl said, what you say is true, but now who is going to marry us now? <laughs> <laughs> Midlife crisis. Did you know Dr. Kishore? When you are saying that this world is responsible to make you happy, now something happens to you, and that is you demand that this person, this object, this setup is meant to make me happy, give me what I want. And if they do not, then I am angry and my anger is justified. It is justified for me to be angry because I married you so that you could make me happy. But after 40 years also, 50 years also, you could not. I am angry at you. In this anger, you have to understand something. This is not because the other person has failed, the world has failed. This is because we have really not understood. And all this can be settled, all this can be resolved just through understanding.
just no understanding and that is why in Vedanta we say the problem of the human suffering, please note this down if you want to, write it down that the problem of human suffering is actually the problem of ignorance. It is the problem of ignorance of not knowing. Knowing means understanding. And he whosoever understands it, obviously this problem is resolved. The problem is solved. All the riddles, all the puzzles are solved. Everything is sitting in its place like the jigsaw puzzle. Every little piece of that jigsaw puzzle is now making the picture complete. Vedanta says that you don't have to run here or anywhere else. The theologians are telling you that you will have to go to heaven. Keep running. Go to heaven. And when you go to heaven, your problem is going to be solved. I can guarantee you it doesn't get solved even there. Say suppose you go to heaven and then the neighbor whom you have hated all your life is also there. Now what? You know why? I'm just saying neighbor, okay? This fellow whom you have hated all your life, you have hated, you didn't want to see him even a single day. Now they are making you sit next to him eternally. Now please tell me the problem is solved or the problem is made forever. This is the solution the theologians are giving. They are talking about the eternal heaven. Eternal heaven means it is an eternal pain. You know what? This, this theologians are very funny. And you are very easy and gullible victims to their, to their thoughts. Each one of us. And this happens because whenever we are desperate, all your Viveka as if is mortgaged. The power to discriminate, think clearly, is as if mortgaged, it is, it is in coma, unconscious. They tell you that go to heaven. And we are all marketing agents of that heaven, different, different. All these tele-evangelists, come on, the God is calling you to heaven, or calling us to heaven for what? Well, this is a big party happening there. Because there's food, there's wine, there's music, everything is sitting up there for you. And if you ever have the best food, say suppose that God decided, let us call pasta and we don't eat anything, right? Yeah. Pasta is, is the best food. Now, day and night, Sunday or Monday, pasta, pasta. If you didn't like, even if your stomach was upset, you had to eat this. Nothing else is available. Heaven, best. Now you please tell me, is this heaven a place for you to enjoy? Or is it a place meant for a person to be eternally frustrated? Eternally bored? What is the plan exactly? This seems to be a conspiracy. This is a conspiracy. Why they have said, I am not going to go into that. But I am simply saying is, understand something. And just in understanding, the problem is resolved. 
the problem of suffering, the problem of dukkham, the problem of misery is a problem of ignorance. If it is the problem of ignorance, all that it takes is only to understand and that understanding solves it. This understanding which resolves the problem of Dukkham is called as Vidya. Sa Vidya Ya Vidya Sa Vidya Jaya Sharam Adhigam Yate It is Vidya means this knowledge and knowledge means please don't think you know that's something that is stored in the books. Knowledge means understanding. It simply means seeing something clearly. 